So recently my, my chum Paul asked me to help out with the delivery and here it is. We've got third degree uh, back to Gearlock Yacht Storage from Kipford. We're going to show you how we did it. Good afternoon fellow sailors. So I'm here in Kipford with my old chum Paul Gray who's there meandering across the mud flats and I'm helping him move uh, this trimaran from Kipford in the Solway Firth to the Clyde. It's a lovely evening. It's a good night for rounding the Mull of Galloway. I've just come on board and I'm introducing myself to this boat, third degree, an interesting trimaran. I think you'll all agree. I'll jump down and get a wee 360 around the, the, the boat as we go, but um, that's my job. Departing about 10 o'clock this evening. That's the Solway Firth out there. I don't know if you can make out, there's a wind farm there. There's a bit more of a channel over there. Rough Island, I think it's called this. Yeah, we've got, after that, it's 40 miles to the Mull of Galloway. Turn the corner and another 100 miles up into the Clyde. That's our job for the evening. And I've, I've absolutely been hammered with the mud. Yeah, you can see my, my feet. It's muddy as heck down here. Uh, and I'm just sort of packing the boat, getting things organised. We've got a wee bit of work to do on the outboard now. And then we're waiting for the tide to come in. Now the thing about the Solway is it's um, there are huge tides here, five, six metres, and the tidal flow can also be extremely, extremely high. You can get four or five knots of tide going through there. So this is the part of the journey that we really need to time right. As we lift off at high water, we're then with the ebb all the way to the Mulla Galloway. Should be there at low tide. And then as we go around the corner, we do encounter an adverse tide against. But by that point, it's less. So... This is the lesser of two evils doing this bit now and it just so happens we're doing it at 10 o'clock at night. So uh, I'm just doing a little bit of orientation and try to get my bearings. Paul's made it to the... Is he? Yeah, he's just about made it to the uh, to the land. Well, I'm going to jump down and give you a little view around the boat just for a, for a laugh while we've still got some light. That's an interesting trimaran, isn't it? So he's left it here from his last attempt to do this job. Got all the anchors out. Paul tried this a, a week or two ago with his son and they only had a six horsepower outboard. Didn't quite cut the mustard to get working against the wind that they had at the time. He's bit the bullet and he's returned with one of his spare big outboards. Bit more overkill this time. So we've got a 15 yam. So hopefully that should improve things. We've got about 60 litres of petrol on board. So that's third degree. Try and give you a few updates as we, we get into this delivery. So as, uh, as is fairly typical of uh, guys on a delivery, we've been to Tesco's and we've raided the junk food aisle. Sorry, Daria, nothing healthy here. As soon as the tide came in, it was time to leave. Third degree left in the dark over the mudflats and out into the Solway Firth. The dynamic duo made good progress towards the Mall of Galloway, averaging around seven knots and doing their best to keep their bearings on a moonless night. As daylight returned, Third Degree was in place to tackle the Mull of Galloway. Even at slug tide, overfalls and countercurrents remained a challenge. We uh, managed to escape the trap that is the Mull of Galloway terrifying place. We were doing about a quarter of a knot over ground when we came round the corner with overfalls and waves and oh, it was miserable. We managed to get pushing enough with the outboard and a sail to get us out of dodge and we're underway. So Paul's pretty happy now. He's got the easy job. The, the nice beam reach with the, the Genoa up the, the rins of Galloway. Maybe got a couple more overfalls to go through later on, but that should be the worst of it out of the way. So, third degree has escaped the Solway, which is a bit of a yacht trap because they struggle to escape from there sometimes. But we're doing well. It's seven in the morning now. We've eaten all the Pringles. What are you saying, Paul? 
How do? What uh, speed are we at? Uh, four, five, still got sixes. Five. That's not bad considering we've probably got about two to three knots of tide against. Assist from the engine. You can get it's so quiet. Chris has managed to get the autopilot working. This means we can have a nap. Hallelujah. This has gone a little bit light. But we did manage to get the autopilot working, so happy days. We're not all having a hand steer all over the place. Um, yeah. There's maybe a wee bit of wind coming in from the behind me there. The next painful slog for third degree was against the wind and tide up the rinds of Galloway, past Corswell Lighthouse and onwards to Millport Anchorage. With a midnight arrival and a country music festival in full swing, there was little rest to be had. After enjoying their breakfast in the Millport sunshine, the delivery of third degree to the upper Clyde continues. So we're not exactly fully equipped on this boat. Here we, <laughs> here, here we are. We've no batteries on this boat. We've got a generator, a few cans of fuel, and a wee battery. And this is what it's come down to, to charging our phones. The irony is not lost on Paul, who uh, observes that the generator is sitting on the solar panel, burning fossil fuels to charge his tiny wee phone. Oh dear. He's no, just no, refused no, no, the interview. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, here we are, just uh, leaving Millport. Uh, we spent the night here on Anchor last night. We're both knackered and yeah, we needed a sandwich this morning. So we're feeling a lot more human now uh, for the last maybe three, four hours back up the Clyde. Um, and that's kind of worked out great. So, oh my God, my hair. So we're down to our last tank of fuel. How much did we have? Uh, 50 or 60 litres. 60 litres we've gone through and um, we're probably, probably going to use all of it by the time we get back to RB. But uh, it's worked out good. We've, um, we, we've kind of made it back to the upper Clyde and just got together the last way now. Where's uh, Paul? A lot happier now that he's had a sandwich and he's got his boat back from the Solway. And we're well on our way to the upper Clyde up to the Gearlock. And it's turned out to be a lovely day. We're all getting burnt. Uh, finally managed to turn the engine off for a few minutes. We're actually sailing. After enjoying some actual food at the Millport Crocodile without a tube of Pringles inside, the delivery of third degree to the upper Clyde continued. So the delivery is complete. <laughs> We've picked up a chum's mooring for the evening. I think the boat will stay here for a couple of weeks. And uh, we're about to have a four or five mile dinghy ride down the loch to get her back to our own boat. So the dinghy's ready. Paul's a happy man, he's done his mission. It's been plaguing him for two and a half years. Look, look, does that look like a stressed out guy or what? No. <laughs> yeah, so like we say, we're here, we're done. Just putting the boat away. Now we've got a, a nice long trip down.
Whilst Paul figured out how to take third degree out of the water, she sat on the murang at the top of the gerlog. Finally, on a chilly day at the end of October with a plan in place, Paul, Chris and the kids sailed third degree over to the boatyard where she was successfully, albeit nervously, brought out of the water. Hello. What are you doing? Good. Uh-huh. What's the chat in here? Uh, I don't know. Right, okay. So what we're doing today, we're helping Paul get uh, third degree out, aren't we? Yeah, to get like boat out of the water. Yeah. And, uh, so and we had a massive dinghy ride, didn't we? We were doing 22 yeah. knots. And we went super fast. Yeah. And also I almost got sick. Nonsense. <laughs> what about you, Ru? You warming up? You got the heat on? Yeah. <laughs> so we're... We're up at the top of the gear lock again with uh, ball in third degree. So the time has finally come to get this thing out of the water. She sat in the mooring for a bit. We finally figured out how to get it out. Uh, so yeah, that's the plan. We're off to to get her out. We've got the kids um, with us, and yeah, here we go. Are you still alive, Ru? Is that a big hole in it? <laughs> yeah, no excuse now, Ruth. Paul's been on it, I've been on it, you have to get on it. <laughs> what, what, what was that ping? I'm trying my foot on it. I'm using I'm putting most of my weight on it, right? Uh-huh, go for it. So it's not that bad, is it? Some what, sorry? Bureau? B-roll. B-roll, what's that? You point the camera for a few minutes, or a few seconds, and... Oh, right, okay. You, you do a musical montage over it. Oh, okay, I don't know, I don't know what this is! <laughs> B-roll, yeah! Whatever! <laughs> Paul's solar arch. So I've, uh, I'm working on mine just now. So that's a bit of inspiration. Yeah, you see, Paul's since installed a nice new autopilot. So that's uh, one one job off the list. What is that, Paul? This was what used to prevent the autopilot from leaking into the boat. Nice. Paul's got a fair bit of work to do in here. Two weekends. Two we <laughs> two weekends. <laughs> What yard are we at? Craig's boat yard? Uh, Gerlock Yacht Storage. Please record, thank you. This is third degree. Uh, what, who, made, who made this tram run? I don't know. Yeah, there's a big green, big red light on it now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's not got a light on it. No, better. <laughs> 
Why was it down in Kipford for two and a half years, Bob? I'm not even sure we were recording those. Uh, we're going to give you a wee show on. <laughs> this will all be in the outtakes. So recently my chum Paul helped ask me to. Look at that. It's recently my. Bah. Start again. Cut. <laughs>